Yeah, baby. Yeah. The Mac is back. Back with another demo slash review. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Unicola, and today we're having a look at Damage Guitars. Another heavy OST library. They sure do keep uh, pumping these out at a pretty impressive rate, but as I've mentioned before, doesn't seem like to me like the uh, the quality is dropping as a result of that at all. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. But damaged guitars. So you probably know the damage lineup, uh, big massive percussion. Uh, you got damage one and two, then you have damage drum kits, all of which I love. And uh, to my understanding, a pretty successful lineup and for a reason. So and also damage piano, which also is a percussive instrument, interestingly enough. But damage guitars. I know very little about this. Heavy OST simply sent me a copy. I've had a look at the main page on the Heavy OST website on this. So I know it's guitars, but I know basically nothing else about it. Uh, and that is intentional because I want to give you my first authentic response and also i find it to be in many ways more enlightening in terms of understanding and and, and uh, seeing how this works right out of the get-go and what kind of things work and what might not work so well in terms of the interface and all of the other stuff but intentionally i've i've i wanted to hear as little as possible <laughs> about this and see as little as possible so you get my authentic first impressions. Um, you will be only hearing damaged guitars in action. I only have a limiter on the master bus to make the level decent for this video. If you hear occasional clipping, that's nasty. It's probably the limiter, and I'll probably say that as we go along. And it, it, this means I also need to be adjusting the, the limiter as we go along. So if you see me play with the mouse, that's probably what I'm doing. Um, and yes, Heavy OST did send me this copy. So first of all, thank you. Um, that being said, as always, all opinions, both in good and bad, are my own. So that's where we're coming from. So going into this completely blind, this is the interface that opens up. Well, actually, uh, let me uh, open the browser here and you're going to see my, my pretty face covered here unfortunately but um, when you open this uh, menu here or this tab you're gonna see different keys so you got damage guitars D damage guitars a damage guitars F sharp so these are the keys I suspect they are uh, recorded in which makes me think that they are in fact uh, loops and then you have the last one which says play says playable guitar textures so, and again, I, I know truly very little about this. So it seems like we have a bunch of loops, uh, which is going to be interesting to see how they laid it out because uh, oftentimes melodic loops that actually have melody or even, you know, changes in, in harmony or, or the, the chord that it is uh, actually in, they sometimes tend to have limited utility. Uh, and this is why I love what Heavy OST has done with uh, the libraries like Novo and Forzo and, and, and Vento is that you have the Evolve engine involves loops, but they're loops in usually in a single note. And in fact, you can play whatever you want. It's simply utilizing the, the loop that it uh, created. And oftentimes it's not even a loop. It, it could be a sample and then it's in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the sequencer engine. But stuff like that is just brilliant. So interesting to see how this is built and done that way. Um, obviously, I've tried, uh, is it called scoring guitars by Heavy OST, which I actually used the, the number one on one of my albums. Uh, and that was really cool, really amazing, really inspiring, and actually surprisingly flexible in terms of what you can do with it musically but enough said i'm gonna take myself to studio one and we're gonna go with uh 
start with the D, as you always should. And um, yeah, looking at the layout here, we're just going to start playing and then I'm going to figure out what's actually happening. So let's get into it. limiter clipping yeah it does respond to dynamics the way you play so that will affect the level quite a bit which uh will i'll try and play as evenly as possible <laughs> Okay, so first of all, super tight, super meaty. This is really well mixed. Again, which is, is not surprising knowing it's heavy osity. Very tight. It does have that particular image and sound, but that's if that's what you're going for, that's really well done sound. Um, you get that immense power, and then it kind of <clears throat> gives a an impression of, of, of the, the keys and 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 the melodies uh it's kind of it's it's more energetic than it is um how should i call it melodic which is great okay let's check what this orange zone is so interesting there it's uh, it's a bass guitar at least it sounds like one pretty distinctively to me so it's called damaged guitars but it also has bass so <laughs> it's an interesting uh choice which immediately makes this obviously tremendously more uh versatile than what you'd expect let's check this top octave here this uh, light blue zone Okay, so you got effects, transitions, stuff like that. The red zone here usually is controlling the key. Uh, so let's check if that's the case. So indeed it does quite a, <laughs> a lot of flexibility here obviously you can also use the tuning function right out of uh, contact uh, this is probably your primary place to use it from the keys the the the, um, the half step it makes it you know you wouldn't you wouldn't barely notice you start hearing some textural changes changes obviously as you begin to move further away from the point of origin but that's kind of interesting. I'm going to combine some of these guitars and, and basses. I'm going to go by octave because I suspect they're paired that in that sort of a way. Let's actually make the key the original. There we go. Limiter clipping. So let me adjust that. Mm -hmm. 
yeah so super meaty super energetic really well paired uh, it's powerful stuff obviously you, you do only have the loops that they're using but that being said you can also tweak loops you can only use parts of it um that works for you which is often the case uh which pff, i do if it's necessary you just take parts and you know glue them as desired um yeah very 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 powerful sounding Yeah, very cool. Uh, these can these can be tremendous when you're looking for inspiration, where you're looking uh, for a starting point. Even if you don't end up using the samples, these can just like kick you into a different gear, into a different place, different mind space, and then off you go. Obviously, these sound fantastic, so great if they uh, serve your compositional needs. Uh, let's cover my face again, and uh, uh, so next up, if we go to A. I suspect we'll uh, we'll hear a. Um, so let's uh, test some of these. I'm really surprised how specific these are and how how brave isn't the right word. These are stylistically quite quite a bit more aggressive than musically than than what I would expect to hear in here. And I think that's awesome because I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh yeah, it's 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 you know, more aggressive and special. You know, not not your uh, typical um uh, sort of safe safe bets that a lot of people might choose when they build libraries like this so this is really cool that it's kind of brave and sharp and different enough uh, let's check some of the bases that is super wet i like super wet stuff this is gnarly this is this is uh it's really great sounding and again it's it's that they get they get the the balance really well for that kind of a sound because it's very punchy very meaty it's this nice wall of sound uh, but it's you can hear that it's it's not going to be intrusive or unpleasant to listen to so really nice uh let's do f sharp yeah so again they all sound absolutely fantastic you do only have the set of riffs here so you got uh what is this um you know basically well one octave per key so you got three octaves or sorry you know three times 12. um 
Yeah, I mean, the the selection, it's not a huge number of, of things. I wonder if I'm not seeing like a additional menu, but I don't think they have more than that. Let me actually check what this costs because I have no idea about that either. Um, because it is definitely a okay so it's two hundred dollars for intro pricing and then full price is 249 and then el uh, eligible heavy OC instrument owners get additional 20 off so it is more expensive than i expected but we haven't checked out all of it yet so let us go into playable guitar textures this is where it gets interesting uh playable guitars uh super tough um to do i must also say this interface is absolutely beautiful um the the coloring all the the balance here is just you know 10 out of 10 um because some like with mosaic neon I felt like a bit like eh, I know it's stylistically like going for a certain look so it's it's kind of like you know criticizing artistic choices or stylistic not not uh, super uh, useful all the time but this th this just uh, very striking very pleasing uh, easy to follow layout here so playable guitars very tough to do very few people can do this really well uh, Orange tree samples is probably to me the the number one experience in terms of playability. Heavy Ostis nylon guitars, which I tested, uh, as I said in that demo, for a lot of um, uh, like stylistically, it can serve perfectly certain things. But in terms of being like super high, realistic, and very flexible to for for all use cases, it doesn't quite tick those boxes for me so i'm really interested to see and hear what this sounds like and how things have maybe developed on that front so you have a bunch of uh so first of all you have this menu here core playable guitars signcaster less uh, angels teledreamer uh etc and then you got PPP, very quiet stuff, interesting. And then textures, which are really interesting to check out as well. And in this um, patch, you also can, you know, choose and change these uh, guitar guitars, first of all, but also guitar tones. So let's go into the core. Cinecaster. Um, again, no idea what's what, what's in here, but. Okay, so massive difference <laughs> to to the nylon freebie, obviously, but uh, I wasn't I wasn't expecting this level of playability. Let's let's keep going before I I start making any statements here. So that's that was the not Stratocaster, and this one is the uh, um, not Les Paul. Thank you. 
the Not Telecaster. Reverse Cinecaster. Limiter clipping. Reverse So we're getting into the small PP category, uh, something which uh, I don't particularly personally know anything about. Uh, Cinecaster, presumably really quiet. kind of dips out here like there you don't have that sample with the transient info there like there you can clearly hear it but there you can't
right? So that seems to be the core playables. So first of all, the good stuff, uh, the production quality again is stunning. And like in the nylon guitar, I felt like a lot of that side, like the effects processing, the the maturity of of the 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 approach behind mi the, the the mixing and the production really do wonders for these samples they sound really ready to go really balanced really really polished i can still hear when i'm playing some of these it's like we're missing that that final level of detail especially when it comes to that those really quiet notes and that kind of transient level information and, and i think this might have been what i said for nylon guitars as well and also i'm i'm kind of left wanting some of that green grittiness some of those those sort of impure impure uh, aspects of of playing a, a stringed instrument so a bit of that grittiness that realism and that that really quiet note tone um which gives that that final level of realism and detail and i think some of these do it better than others obviously it's always a stylistic choice okay let's record a, a telecaster in this and this style but re regardless like as, as an overarching thing that i would still develop would be that those tiny nuances and sometimes when i'm playing i feel like it's missing that that final level of 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 nuance and detail um that would make it sound just more real and and, and emotionally connect with me because if you get that kind of a maybe a, a too flat of a response um or kind of a dull uh response then it's kind of loses a lot uh, loses a lot of realism and the the emotion is 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 kind of lost but it really will depend a lot on what kind of music you're writing so that is something definitely to to consider um having said that like having this playable folder here at all uh, definitely makes the offer here uh far more appealing and 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 vast than than uh you know just having the loops alone uh, obviously so let's go into textures and uh listen to what this sounds like super cinematic very very playable uh very dynamic in that sense and again the this is really well balanced and produced and mixed angels in the clouds On, on these ones has been super nice a uh, perfect amount of warmth and kind of that wrapping around you but not being overwhelming uh, that's really well balanced
Yeah, very cool. Bad cable pad. Very nice, very cinematic. Uh, again, the, the the mixes, the balances are great. Um, cloud connected. super nice yeah instant cues instant inspiration in these ones These distorted ones are working really well as well. I actually really like this and I think this is kind of like because to me what's special about Novo for Sovento a lot of the heavy OST stuff is taking something organic taking something real 
then doing the heavy velocity treatment on it, putting the sounds into these fantastic engines, because this sounds really great, but it sounds like its own thing, kind of organic meeting synthetic. And this like, yes, I'm kind of like, obviously hearing that it's a guitar tone, but it's now something different. It's doing something differently. And this just made me like, um, kind of feel like I, I would want that same, I want to see more of that, that same uh, treatment in there. Uh, but th this just sounds like its own thing, super inspiring, has its own sound. Uh, so this is really cool. Very nice, like uh, it's its own kind of a thing. I wonder where the ARP is actually coming from. So it seems like this uh, performance tab here, you got gate, you got ARP, rate, mode, gate. So that's a pretty simplistic, but then again, I mean the, hmm, the gate, I wonder why it doesn't have like a mosaic style uh, sequencer type of a thing. But maybe it's uh, it's a different thing to build it. Um, so let me play with that just a bit. So yeah, a very kind of simplistic ARP here. I would love to see like a mosaic style sequencer page thingy, whatever you call it. I love that. It's a, it's a really super inspiring thing. Kind of looks like the gate thing here. Uh, so not actually sure whether this is the same thing. Well, it's not, because uh, it's it's a gate. <laughs> so, next up, Sunburst finishes.
again, very nice once you get into this kind of more um, broken, uh, not not broken, but this synthetic uh, <coughs> approach. This really, I don't know what it is about the heavy OST sampling and, 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 and everything that it lends itself really well to these kind of hybrid approaches. Uh, so it seems like that that got us through everything. So let me just check I'm not I'm not missing here. So we did yeah all the keys so and all the playable guitar textures. So this is a really interesting combination thing. So first of all you get the you get the loops, get the, the guitar loops. Let me go ahead and actually I'm opening this up just to make sure uh, I get things right. Just have a brief look here. Um, Cause I wonder, all right, so you got a slot for the guitar loops. Yes. And then you have the slot for the heavy bass in the middle. And then you have this combo, which I actually have no idea what it does, but I suspect it combines both. Uh, so the selection here, just just trying to make sure I don't misunderstand the, the offers here. Um, because you do have this uh, kind of um, selector here. So you got heavy guitar, one. Alright, so if I do understand this correctly, you get more. So, hmm. This is kind of hard to decipher what is what because obviously you have, okay, these three presets in different keys. But then, okay, okay, yeah, this makes, this makes more sense. So, single instrument menus. You got guitar riff menu one, two, bass, yeah, okay. So there's a lot of more of these loops in here. Cause I did feel like that that seemed like a bit on the low end of what they're offering. But this makes it, yeah, this seems more reasonable and, and I this is what I would expect to see as well. So So yeah, you would go based on key and then you would probably dive into into this menu here, which is dedicated for the guitars, the first blue section, and then you can choose whatever you want. But then you also have this menu here, which basically offers the, I, I presume the same thing, but categorized differently, but you have single instrument menus. We could go uh, anyway with this. But the point is I'm glad I, I, I uh, to check this out just to understand the scope of the offering here so okay loops to summarize they sound fantastic brilliantly mixed super powerful so if if these cater to the sound of you know uh, rougher guitars that you want to have then it's fantastic stuff uh, obviously you're limited by the loops that you have but based on what i'm hearing here they're again pretty well designed in the sense that they you can splice them up you can use parts of them uh to to construct more of what you specifically are after so these are quite flexible in that way and even if you don't use them like we said 
you can use them as inspiration. You can use them as starting points, or you can use them, you know, if you just know there's going to be like a more of a hard hitting part that isn't super melodic and you just want like a, maybe not that riff, but. Like you have the general idea of what you're after and then you just want something super hard hitting, rhythmic, simple. then this kind of stuff can be fantastic. Uh, so will it be useful to you? You're going to have to be the judge of that because you can take this and make just absolutely heart hitting, stunning uh, stuff with it. So I can't really comment on the utility aspect of it. You're, you're going to have to be the deciding factor. But if it does cater to a need, uh, nothing else comes to mind that offers this level of, you know, productional uh, quality. And, and obviously, loops um the benefit of it is that these are fantastically played you don't have to play and program it yourself to make it sound half as good as this does so there's that that upside and as mentioned uh you don't have to use whole loops you can use parts of it you can combine them you can you know splice things up to make really build your own part because a lot of the time you know what you're after and then you just you know collect the pieces here to make it happen or something close or sometimes even something just like that but even better um, obviously that's a whole it's a whole uh, process of its own and can take quite a bit of work but um, the results can absolutely be worth it all right next up wrapping up um, wrapping up the playable section here so first of all, core playable guitars. I think that I summarized that pretty well after the section. Uh, over, overall, the sound is fantastic. The production quality is fantastic. The only thing that I'm missing is, again, that, that final, what would I say, 30, 20% of realism, depending on the preset or the sound we're using. Those tiny details, like feeling like you're actually plucking the strings. Sometimes I find myself like, oh, it's missing that. Then we had some of those weird dynamic drops or just like there isn't a sample that matches the other transient balances here. So the final quiet details and a bit more of that gritty, uh, tangible, you know, string sounds that you get. Uh, that's that's what I am missing here. But again, the, the soundscapes of these are beautifully balanced and mixed. I would like to see a bit more versatility in terms of these. These are beautifully cinematic and ambient, which I'm perfectly fine with. But maybe a bit more diversity in terms of the preset sounds. Like diff these tend to be in that darker tone. And fair enough, like you make a library and it, you make it in a certain style but a bit more diversity. I, that's what I w was left wanting in terms of the kind of the soundscape uh, offering. Lastly, the textures, kind of the same thing. They're beautiful sounding. They share quite a lot of that same tone. And, and, and again, obviously this library is done with a specific style in mind, but a bit more diversity uh, uh, would just expand the utility of this library a tremendous amount uh, and like i said i would really love to see more of those arpeggiated sequenced uh sounds in fact I, I would love to see an entire library that did nothing but that and i i, I would i would uh, uh i would be looking at at getting it because that is what th libraries like novo and forzo and vento do so well uh so yeah and also I, I kind of left wanting for for a uh, kind of mosaic style arpeggiator sequencer. I think that would just blow up the, the utility of this even more. Um, so I, I guess that kind of summarizes my, my thoughts on this. It's a really, really interesting combination, a lot of things. First of all, and th then you have the basses, the bass guitars in there as well, which you obviously would not expect, or at least I wouldn't, based on the uh, based on the title and the name of this library. So, 
yeah, really interesting. Uh, if the price was, did I remember correctly, uh, 250 full price, uh, I, I would say that's a bit on the, the high end of what I would guess for this. But again, I'm not going to go into the, the price conversation is so, it's so dependent on, it's, a, it's multifactorial. So, and at the end of the day, the person who's buying has to be the judge of that and is going to be the judge of that. And then you have different people at so many different levels using it for so many different purposes that it's just like judging it uh, is is uh, just dependent on the perspective that you choose to occupy. So um, I don't think it's unreasonable by any means. Uh, I would expect it to be a bit lower than that, uh, intuitively saying. But again, if there's something in here that just really clicks for you and, and, and makes you write tremendous music with it, then it's basically nothing. Uh, you know, if you make one great track and you make any sort of, sort of a living with, <laughs> with music, uh, then you know, obviously then the, the price is kind of a no-brainer in that sense. But really interesting selection of things. Uh, I have previously said that Heavy Hosty has been... Uh, the, what they offer in packages is f oftentimes far more than what they put on the label. And you, so you get and end up getting a tremendous return on your investment. Like, uh, like with Uncharted 88, the, the damaged piano is just like so much more than what they even have on the website. Fantastic uh, product. And this kind of does the same thing, but it's, it's just quite surprising what, what it what it offers. And uh, but yeah, I would I would love to see some expansion uh, on the you know the textures and the the ARP stuff and and the playables a bit more uh, detail on on the on the playables. Um, but um, yeah, it, it it does sound absolutely fantastic in terms of the the production quality. So. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that kind of summarizes my thoughts on this. Uh, again, thank you, Javiosti, for sending me uh, a copy to to check out. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing how this might serve for a future project. It's going to be next year <laughs> when I can actually have the time to do it. But I will definitely test this for a kind of a orchestral metal thing that I have really interested in seeing how this uh, works both as an inspirational tool as well as you know offering me the kind of details that I'm after uh, when it comes to uh, you know going for riffs and, and rhythms and and maybe even some kind of simple simple uh, melodies well I guess riffs is the, the term I'm looking for but let me know what you think uh, sort of for the scattered approach like I said you know first time looking at these which has uh its ups and downs uh, perks and 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 weaknesses but uh let me know down in the comments thank you for watching thank you for listening i'll see you next time finished <laughs>